counting down the best James Bond pre-title sequences, in at number 17 is You Only Live Twice. We're made to think for a brief second, obviously, of course, he would never die, that Bond has died. So yeah. it's sub subverting expectations a bit. Obviously, the audience knows he's going to be all right because it's the pre-title sequence. It's, not, know, it's a bit different. And I think it's one that gets a bit forgotten. The space capsule scene is obviously repeated later on in the film. And you might be mm. trying to think, oh, I remember that scene vividly, but I couldn't remember that that was the very first thing we saw. The slaying of Bond in the bed. It's pretty underrated, really. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. What they've done is, a few before, they've been thinking, oh, James Bond's going to die. And they're like, nah, it's not really James Bond. Whereas this one subverts expectations in terms of that James Bond's dead and that's how it finishes. Yeah. 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 Presumably either there were blanks or he faked his death or there's something happened. I don't know the answer to, to that. Is it just a bulletproof bed? No, but no, because there's blood is awful, isn't it? But he could put blood, he could then, you know, squeeze some ketchup over the sheets, kind of. Yeah. But I'm guessing that the policemen are in on it. Because yes. they declare him dead, yeah. so it must, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. it's still governed then by us, the UK, wasn't it? Hong Kong. Yeah. yeah. So that's why you see a few of them got English, speak English, aren't they? When they cut storm in, there are bullet holes in the bed. They can't be blanks. We're too late. Well, at least he died on the job. He'd have wanted it this way. It was when the bed flipped over. Then there's the gunshots, sh aren't there? Yeah. Baby yeah. Bond just ran out of the way. Yeah, it's uh, so fascinating, this pre-title sequence, because we've had something completely different before, you know. Yep. So after the gun barrel, it immediately shows a, you know, a shuttle in space. Yeah. It's like, whoa. If you think back of how yeah. this is now progressing, this film series, and, yeah. you know, the openings of each, to have the opening set in space. Yeah. That yeah. Outrageous. It's It's... Astonishing. I remember seeing it on the big screen when they, when they were on, you know, here in the UK, and it was just like, whoa, like huge screen, this this spaceship. We have all this up in space, and then we have, you know, the bit with with Bond dying. But they're so, all to do with the plot, aren't they? So yeah, I mean, Lewis Gilbert does this same trait in all three of his films. He starts with the hijacking of um, yeah. a spaceship, hmm. uh, a ship, or uh, the Moonraker. Yeah. So he starts with that, and then it follows by "We've got a man on the job," and it goes to James Bond necking with a lady in yeah. all three of Lewis Gilbert's things. A man in Hong Kong is working on it now. So you've got that going on, and that's a trait, and it's storytelling trait. What I love about this one is the scale of what it's doing. Mm. It's the scale. This is much, much bigger. The stakes are higher than they've ever been in a in a pre-title sequence here. Invasion of space. It's a different level. It's all over very quickly. Some good lines there between Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very, very best duck and Yeah. Well, girls <laughs> taste different. You couldn't say that now. Yeah. No. You think we better, huh? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> no, it's just different. Equal opportunity. Yeah. Why do Chinese girls taste different from all other girls? You think we better, huh? No, just different. Like Peking duck is different from Russian caviar, but I love them both. Darling, I give you very best duck. Well, that'd be lovely. We have had some interesting times together, Ling. I'd be sorry to go. Mm. And the other thing that I really like about this is the amount of characters who turn up, who turn oh. up in different bombs. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so oh, who's yeah. who, isn't it? You've got Klaus Hergesheimer. There is an unidentified object closing on you. Pass from a stern. Can you see it? Hawaii from Cape Cod. We have nothing here. Hold while we check with space track. Hawaii to Jupiter 16. You've got yeah, he's the one. On. Who, he's the one who says, "Yeah, unidentified." Yeah, in a yeah. lumberjack shirt for some reason. Yeah, yeah, in a lumber... yeah. It's because is, is that because they're in Hawaii? Basically, is that like I think that's Hawaii station, isn't it? So throw them in, yeah, you know, Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Shane River later. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then you've got Morton Slumber as the uh, yeah, yeah. As the yeah. USA. A blatant attempt. My government sees this as nothing less than a blatant attempt to gain complete and absolute control of space itself for military purposes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think you see as well like that Ed Bishop, Shane Rimmer connection. You see this whole thing is Jerry Anderson in terms of that yeah, space. Yeah. It's very Jerry Anderson, very Thunderbirds in it, and I'm all for it. I love it. 
it's quite scary. It's almost like horror. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. It's almost like I don't know. It's almost like Jaws. I know that's stupid, but like this thing is coming towards yeah. you, and you know you can't, you don't know what it is, and it's unidentified. Yeah. Jaws three. You can't can't stop it, and then yeah, and then um, the guy being cut off, and it's so effective how you know the communication oh. stops. Yeah. And just the silence. Oh. It's... Are you receiving me? It must be one of the more famous John Barry Q's, actually. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. And it's, it's sensational. It's brilliantly later. It gets more and more tense, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, even so, from that ending, there. from the first notes, mm -hmm. the first notes, yeah. it's military, it's slow, it's like mm -hmm. ominous, though, as well. You know, yeah. it's amazing how the franchise has set up intrigue with just some musical notes. Like, you yeah. know you're in a Bond film, you know that it's building towards something and the music is directing you, but not in a, such an obvious way, in a beauty, like, this is beautiful, yeah. absolutely incredible absolutely. music that Barry... It's stunning. It's more yeah. than just a military drum beat, it's become so melodic. Yeah. The effects as well, I know Matt said we saw mm. it in the cinema, but even on yeah. the small screen at this, what, 1967, this is pretty, yeah. pretty impressive, isn't it? I think it's really convincing. I, it is. I, yeah. I don't think it's dated that much, really. Uh, I don't no. think it's dated whatsoever. I really don't. Yeah. Okay. yeah. This is two years before we landed on the moon. So the space mm. race was going on as well, wasn't it? Yeah. Right. Which yeah. Had, yeah. Got there first in space. So there was that rivalry as well. Yeah. All yeah. part of the Cold War. And Fleming was great at escalating that. But then it actually it wasn't that, was it? It was something else. It's a very strong start to the story into the film. And all, all snow. The, yeah, snow, yeah, yeah. You get snow you get, in the like, which is mm. underrated. That's a great set by Ken Adam, isn't it? I mean the, the yeah. camera work as well, looking up. Oh yeah. Tables. You know, there's no it's, need for this man. Just but you feel the stakes, you know, you feel yeah. you feel how like yeah. important this is and how tense it is. Um, on a you know global scale, yeah. Well, you have got world war, haven't you? And and mm. and we've never had we've never had world war before. You know, mm. before no. we've had True. we've had Spectre trying to like extortion. Six minutes long, three different yeah. scenes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's instant. Good. You are instantly in. 